All right, how's everyone doing? Good. Good. All right, so I'm going to sort of try and set the stage because we're about to get to work in the workshops and really dig into some of the detailed questions about building this movement. And this conference is really about uh, the question of how do social movements win, win? And in particular, how do we build a, a winning social movement that's going to get us past the, past the finish line? And it turns out this is not actually the easiest question to answer. Um, it's much easier to answer the question of how do campaign, campaigns win. And there's, a, there's actually an industry about training people how to win campaigns, um, how to get from the start to the finish, how to build enough resources to get to the end. But social movements are really different from campaigns. And, and just to look at it a couple ways, most campaigns are centrally coordinated. It doesn't mean it's just one organization, but they're centrally coordinated. Uh, social movements have we seen just in this room and just in this weekend, lots of organizations, lots of different communities, people who aren't even in organizations at all are part of this movement, and we all have somewhat different priorities, somewhat different strategies, different uh, tactical orientations. Um, so it's, it's more like herding cats than it is running a campaign um, in some ways. And also, you know, campaigns have limited timelines. They have sort of a beginning and an end. You can sketch them out, whereas we measure the progress of social movements over the course of generations. And actually being effective in a social movement is different at each stage that you, uh, that you move through. Um, just to take a couple of examples, think about a state that has uh, very little support for single payer among the, uh, among the population, that has sort of a limited social justice infrastructure, maybe not high union density, a small activist network fighting for single payer to start with, a small coalition, and a very hostile legislature and governor. Now think about what is an effective organizing strategy to build a social movement in that state. It's not going to be doing the same things as another state that has strong majority support in the population, that has high union density, has a social justice infrastructure, uh, that has a big coalition, sort of like uh, what's happening in New York, uh, strong support from the legislature and or the governor. Uh, once you get to that end game where you have uh, enough power to start using it in different ways, being an effective social movement is a whole different question, and you, you have to do things differently. So one of the plenaries that we're going to get tonight, which is about lessons from Vermont and looking at New York, is about specifically this question, how do you be an effective social movement towards the end once you've built power? But that's not the only question for our movements on a national scale. We have to answer um, a, a different questions about how to be an effective social movement. So I, I'm going to introduce, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, this concept of movement action planning. Uh, this was developed by Bill Moyers, not to be confused with Bill Moyer, the, the PBS guy. Uh, Bill Moyers was, a, was an organizing consultant for many decades. He passed away a few years ago. And he developed this model of uh, how do, he, he looked in the history of successful social movements and what stages they went through to become an effective so, so, social movement that eventually wins. Um, and what happens to those who don't win. And what does it look like to be effective at the different stages of a social movement. And he also had, uh, I think there was one important uh, feature of the movement action planning model, which is that he discovered that most activists in most social movements think they're losing all the time, even when they're not losing. <laughs> and I, I find this all the time in the, the single pair movement. We think that, oh my God, you know, look at all the money that's against us, um, you know, uh, look at the, the direction Congress is going in, this is just never going to happen. Um, you know, there's that joke that everyone tells in the single pair movement of, uh, somebody going to heaven and asking God, you know, are we ever going to have single payer in the United States? And he says, yes, but not in my lifetime. <laughs> it reflects a sort of, um, you know, we're passionate about this issue. We're obviously fighting for it. We all care about it because it affects our lives and we can't afford not to fight for it. But having real hope is different. And a lot of people uh, have actually a false sense of hope. And he found that, uh, Bill Murray's found that even winning social movements, everyone uh, often feels like they're losing. So I'm going to really quickly just go through some of the more relevant parts of movement action planning for our movement, the single pair movement. Um, I'm not going to go through all these eight stages, I swear to God. Um, so, but his, his model has eight stages all the way from the very beginning to uh, winning and after you win, maintaining uh, your victories. Um, I'm just going to talk about a few of these, which is... Take off, um, it, take off perception of failure, majority public opinion, and success stage. Um, he has a book called uh, uh, Building Democ Doing Democracy that you might want to check out. And I'm also going to put up on the wiki, we have a wiki for the conference. I'll put up a bunch of shorter Bill Moyer art uh, Moyer's articles that you can check out if you want to look, look at this more in depth. Um, so there's one important thing. This is, uh, he actually tried to sketch out, as you move through the stages of a social movement, 
there's two basic things you're fighting. One is to win support uh, among, uh, uh, among the population that the status quo is not acceptable. And that can actually, some social movements spend the majority of their lifetime trying to win that fight, trying to win, win, win acknowledgement that a problem exists and has to be addressed and that it violates our basic values as a society. Um, but then there's a totally different fight, which is to win support for an alternative. And sometimes that only happens towards the very end of social movements. And he ambitiously tried to map out in a graph how it happens across all social movements, which is uh, ambitious. But uh, just talking about, so uh, he describes a takeoff stage of many social movements where there's some trigger event that leads to a large action campaign. There's rallies, there's marches, civil disobedience. Uh, often a successful tactic will be repeated around the country. Um, and that it dramatically exposes the problem to the general public. This goes a long way towards exposing the issue and winning acknowledgement that this issue needs to be addressed. But uh, very rarely does this stage, this takeoff stage, lead to victory, lead to winning support for an alternative on its own. And this is what often causes a, a perception of failure among uh, movement activists, especially right after there's a big sort of period of uprising. People sometimes think that that is the whole social movement, just when there's big rallies, just when you have people in the streets, and that the only way for to win is to get back to that stage. I hear this all the time in the single parent movement, that we need to have people back in the streets, we need to have people having rallies all the time, but that is not the only part of the social movement, it's not the only important part of winning a social movement. Um, it's one stage and it's an important stage. Um, and the, uh, so following that is what he calls a majority building stage, which I'll talk about really briefly. Um, and this, the majority public opinion stage is a long-term grassroots struggle that leads to sort of a slow, imperceptible process of social transformation. And Bill Morris has this great quote that I just, I'll just read it out verbatim. He says, the key to this stage, uh, the success of this stage is ultimately the ongoing day in and day out basic organizing efforts of local activists, which include constant outreach and involvement of the local citizenry. This can only be done by a wide variety of organizations with relatively few paid staff, but a large number of volunteers. Does this sound familiar to anyone? <laughs> and, you know, what I often feel like is people who are doing this work of just going to community groups, talking to churches, getting people on board slowly, they feel like that's not movement building, that that's not action, that that's not winning the movement, but that's actually equally as important as those stages where we're having rallies in the streets and have a big uprising. In fact, it's more important for building support for all our, our alternative, which is single payer. So we have to learn to value that type of organizing. And I think we're actually not bad at it. We have a lot of state organizations. We have viable single payer groups in most states. And people do this work on a constant basis all the time. And we should be really proud of the fact that we have this infrastructure that keeps going even when there's not a giant national uprising around single payer health care. Um, and this, of course, this when we become more successful at this type of organizing, uh, the opposition kicks into kicks into gear. Um, and Bill Moyers describes the crisis management that power holders use to try and keep these movements down. One is that they'll often change strategies um, to try and counter movement strategies. There's sort of a back and forth. Uh, but each new strategy that our opposition takes on is more difficult to sustain over time. And I think we could even see the Affordable Care Act in a way as a, a, an attempt to hold off single-payer health care, yeah. a new strategy um, that is trying to, but uh, look at the cost that uh, Democrats had to pay for passing the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. And think about Republicans. If the Republican health plan passes, uh, and you know, we, God forbid we get you know, Republican uh, Congress and President, and they pass all this crazy <laughs> shit they're talking about, do you think that they're not going to have incredible political consequences to pay for, for doing that? So all of these alternatives are costing our opposition, the power holders, more and more and more as time goes on. Um, and in the middle of this stage of building uh, majority support, power holders try to co-opt the movement's goals and ideas and rhetoric. We saw, I saw that in Massachusetts where, uh, you know, that was sort of the, the prequel to the Affordable Care Act, and they were calling it universal health care, right? It used to be that universal health care was single-payer health care, but now uh, it's, universal health care is a, a co-opted value and idea that's used to describe completely different things. Uh, and they'll also try to co-opt movement groups on the right end of the spectrum within our movement, um, or central part of the movement. And we saw a lot of that in, in states that get closer and closer to winning. So I'm going to skip through some of this stuff to, to in the interest of time, but I want to briefly talk about the success stage. We're not there yet. Um, but he says, even when you win, 
uh, there's three ways to win. One is the dramatic showdown, which is very, very rare. That's where you have sort of a national uprising and a law passes and you win. Um, probably the, uh, the Voting Rights Act is the closest we've ever seen to that. Where the, uh, the march from Montgomery to Selma, uh, two to three uh, months later, that bill passed. Um, but that's actually very, very rare that it happens that way. Um, uh, the other way is the quiet showdown, uh, which is uh, uh, sort of where, uh, without acknowledging that they're doing what you've been fighting for, power holders pass what you've been fighting for and try to, try to take all the credit themselves. Um, and then finally is attrition. Sometimes you can sort of win not exactly the way you planned it over a long period of time, uh, like the anti-nuclear power movements. Essentially, they just stopped building uh, nuclear power plants without changing policy at all. Um, so they won effectively through attrition. Um, and you'll realize that only one of these uh, does the movement get credit for winning. And it almost never happens. So even uh, both in the organizing stage and after you've won, um, it's hard to sort of keep morale up and a, a, maintain a sense of hope and that we're being effective agents of change. Um, and I just briefly want to... How am I doing that? All right. I briefly want to talk about... I want to talk about two other really important social movements that have uh, happened happening right now or happened recently as just points of comparison. Uh, think about the Black Lives Matter movement, which is probably the most important social movement happening right now. Um, but look at where they at. This is this is just a public opinion poll from 2013 about um, black males are more likely to go to prison. Is it mostly due to discrimination or something else? The, the vast majority of the population feels that it's due to something else, not discrimination. And you can see there's a massive gap in awareness between white people, Hispanics, and, and black people, which is the only demographic that believes that discrimination is the cause of, of mass incarceration of African Americans. Um, and the same exact thing for job discrimination. Uh, do blacks, ha uh, blacks have as good a chance as whites to get any kind of job for which they're qualified? Um, the majority of uh, people feel that they, they are. That there's job equity, essentially, except for African Americans. So, whatever the Black Lives Matter movement at is still trying to win recognition of the problem, right? So they're actually at an earlier stage than we are in the single parent movement, where there's basically universal acknowledgement that our healthcare system is broken, that it needs to be fixed, um, and we, we can even almost agree on the problems with the healthcare system: cost, lack of access, less, lack of quality. It's all, and so we're definitely at the stage the later stage of trying to win support for an alternative, and we have states where there is majority support for an alternative, and we just need enough power to implement it. So we've actually come a long way, and there's very important social movements that are going through those takeoff <laughs> stages with public, large public actions, but they have a longer way to go than we do in the single parent movement. Um, so we're actually, uh, before you start bemoaning our fight and how difficult it is, um, we, we are closer to the, to the finish line than a lot of other major social movements. And uh, briefly talking about the Occupy movement, um, the Occupy movement, I think, uh, really helped our com uh, country move towards acknowledgement that inequality both exists, is getting worse, and is unacceptable. And um, I think the Occupy movement did not successfully move into that majority building stage. It didn't lead to, in every state, quiet door-to-door -door organizing uh, and outreach efforts but it definitely impacted public opinion when it happened. And I think it opened the door for candidates like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, who can basically run on an inequality platform now and, and get massive uh, support uh, among the electorate. So that's changed, but also I think that that fight for attacking inequality is also further behind than the single payer movement is. Um, and this is just growing support. So uh, I think we're actually in a very good place and we should feel proud of where we are, what we've accomplished, and how close we are to the finish line in some places. Uh, but that is not to minimize the organizing task we have to get past that finish line and to win in all states um, and for everyone. But there is almost universal recognition of the crisis uh, 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 of the healthcare system. There's majority support for single payer in many parts of the country, probably on average nationally, there's a majority of support for single payer. There's active grassroots organizations across the country, um, and several states are close to that end game fight. Um, so I, I hope as you go forward uh, and go into your workshops, you sort of think about where you are in your state in social movement building, what are effective tactics, where your movement is at, and in the communities you're fighting in. Um, and uh, just another reminder that we're going to have this wiki up. Uh, post all your notes across the, and your photos and your thoughts and comments on the wiki, or you can just email it to us and we'll post them up for you. Uh, but thank you so much, and I look forward to working with you.